And today we're doing something a little different. Uh, typically on the weekends we do website or YouTube channel reviews. And today we're still gonna do that, except we're gonna be reviewing my YouTube channel and we're gonna be going back into the past in some of my first videos. And we're gonna be watching some potentially some cringe worthy videos. And I wanna have you comment on them. And in fact, I'll be commenting on them as well. It'll be fun to see how far uh, definitely we've come in the channel but also at the same time, it'll be hopefully inspirational for those of you who are a little bit more reluctant to get started or you're worried about what might happen if you put something out that's less perfect. As I often say, you have to be a disaster before you become the master. And I was definitely a disaster up front, but uh, you gotta get through those things to learn, to grow, to step out of your comfort zone, which is where all the awesome things happen. And so today, let's go back into the past. I should have wore a Back to the Future shirt. That would have made more sense today. But hey, I'm an old man. Old gamer, that's what happens anyway. So anyway, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you. Say hello in the chat, say hello to somebody you know, and uh, enjoy the show. Here we go. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. And apparently, the chat's telling me that today is National Ice Cream Day, which I did not know. That, uh, where did all these days of random things come from? I think this is one of the byproducts of the internet, obviously. Uh, but anyway, let's say hello to everybody in the house. We got uh, Martin, we got Samson, we got uh, Dawn in the house. Dawn, I know you weren't with us yesterday, but I'm so glad you're back today. We got Xenia saying hello and good evening to Bernard. What's up, Bernard? What's up, Xenia and Vlada? What's up, Manos? Great to see you here. Rex, consult a blind guy. Fun will now commence. Uh, Startup Flame, we got uh, save, a, save Like a Bear. Good morning, good afternoon, old man in quarantine. Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I am an old man. You know, I remember going to a conference once, and this was more related to my podcast, even though I had started my YouTube channel earlier than that by one year. Uh, the YouTube channel started in 09. The podcast started in 2010. But I went to a conference, and I was told by three separate people at this conference that I was like a legend in the world of podcasting. And I was like, doesn't that mean you're either like dead or super old? Because I was only like 35 at the time. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And I think, you know, just the internet, it changes so fast and new and new things come out. And when you're early to adopt something like I was with podcasting uh, and when you've helped so many other people, you know, you can be seen like that. And I would love for you to have those sort of moments over time as well. When people come to you and they go, man, I remember following you back in the day. And it's just, it's such a cool feeling. And, you know, it's just confirmation that, you know, we're doing the right thing, right? So, uh, you know, I, although I, I, I am getting older, I'm, I'm, I still feel very young and I still feel like I'm at the beginning stages of a lot of what's to come, obviously. Uh, in the world of YouTube specifically and video, I still feel like I have so much to learn. I'm definitely not a master at this yet and I'm learning from a lot of people like Roberto Blake and Sean Cannell and Benji Travis, uh, Tim Schmoyer, uh, Sunny Leonard Doozy, who has recently shifted her strategy. I highly recommend you check out some of her videos recently. And I love where she's going because she is somebody who's been teaching a lot of tactics and strategies about YouTube, especially on the business side of things for a while. But recently she's been opening up to the idea of just being more authentic about doing what's right. And that's been actually exploding her channel. And I highly recommend you check out her if you haven't heard about her. Again, her name is Sunny Leonard Doozy, and she's fantastic. Um, Let's see, we should dive into the archive right now. Uh, again, my quick YouTube stories, I started YouTube in 2009, and this was simply a place to put just a couple videos that were more tutorial style. I wasn't, I wasn't ever planning on being quote unquote serious with it or consistent with it like I was with my blog. I was blogging three times a week, didn't have much time to put effort into YouTube, nor did I have a lot of encouragement or just I wasn't comfortable putting my face on camera, which is why you'll see when we go back into the archive, a lot of my first videos are just simply me doing screen recordings. And that's a great stepping stone. It took a while for me to get comfortable with putting my face on camera. I did it once in a video, but then I quickly turned it around and I was shown in this tour of my apartment. I shared that video, I think earlier last week, and I'm not gonna share that video today, but I'll, uh, I'll highlight it because it was the first one where I put my face on camera because I was so worried about what people were gonna say. However, 
Everyone, nobody said any like, oh, look at that guy's face or anything. Like no, nobody did, said anything like that, which is like what we think is going to happen. We always, our brains do a good job of coming up with like the worst case scenarios, right? Like we're going to, I remember when I first started public speaking, I had imagined that the audience would like start throwing tomatoes at me. I'm like, what, where would, where do they even get these tomatoes? I have no idea, but you make this stuff up and your brain can get in the way of you enjoying these results often. So let's go back into the archive. I'm gonna share my computer here. And as you'll see, these are my channel videos. Um, I don't even know how many videos I now have. I think it's about 300 or 400, which is a lot, but it's also not a lot. Again, remember, I took a lot of random pauses in between. Again, I wasn't consistent until about February 2018. And even then, I've taken some breaks here and there. Obviously, the biggest streak I've ever done was this income stream, which is a live show that's happened for the last 122 days in a row. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and hook me up with a thumbs up if you like this video and or this channel or the things that we're saying here. But I wanted to flip the script a little bit because on the weekends, we typically review some of your stuff. And today I wanted to do it a little bit different and show you some stuff from my past that wasn't great and could have been improved. And I'm gonna take the same approach as far as what I wish I would have done differently. And I would love for you to comment on them as well. And hopefully we can have a good laugh or two. Some of these videos I know are sort of ridiculous. Um, however, some of these older videos also have been seen quite a bit. Some of them, <laughs> Rex is like, throws tomato at Peflin. Even virtually, it hurts a little bit, Rex. It hurts, no, I'm just kidding. And I remember interviewing MKBHD recently. I don't, I don't know if you know who that is, but he's probably the largest tech reviewer here. And I interviewed him on my podcast, but I filmed it on video and I sort of repurposed that and I put it here on YouTube as five surprising facts that I learned about MKBHD. And the first one that I found out about was the fact that his first 100 videos that he made were for his first 100 subscribers. His first 100 videos were for his first 100 subscribers. And I look back and I'm like, wow, I think I got to 100 subscribers after like 30 or 40 videos. What if I had just kept going? What if I, Rafal, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you, you are amazing. And thank you to everybody for being here today. Um, it's like, whoa, what if I was consistent? And you know, he had a passion for reviewing things and you know, people in the tech space, they will never run out of things to talk about. I thought I ran out of things to talk about, but I just didn't encourage myself enough to think outside the box. And I wasn't positioning myself as somebody who was gonna remain consistent with it. And I was focusing on podcasting as well. And that's, you know, the funny thing is where I did focus my time and where I was consistent, that grew. And although I look back and I'm like, oh, I wish I was more consistent with YouTube. At the same time, I was consistent somewhere and I was focused on that. And wherever you focus, that consistency is really key, right? What if I had, been half all in on podcasting and half all in on YouTube, maybe I wouldn't be where I'm at today because my efforts and energy was divided. I can pretty much just assume that that would be the case. So now that the podcast is running up like a machine and I have a team there where I can, where I can record a podcast episode and things are just kind of rolling now, I can now spend more time here on the income stream and on the Pat Flynn YouTube channel, right? Always something to learn from our past 30 seconds of bravery, right? You know, some of that just upfront getting, you know, hey, you know what, I'm gonna do this. Let's put it out there and see what happens. I think what's also scary about YouTube in particular that frightened me was just the nature of YouTube comments just in general are a lot more toxic than comments elsewhere. I mean, that's another thing that I love about, about podcasting. Where do you put comments on your podcast? There really is no place. There's reviews, but those are fewer and far between. But the blog comments really were the place to hold podcast comments. And so there was less activity and people often who listen to podcasts are a little bit more devoted, a little bit more, I don't know, um, not sincere, but just if they've listened all the way through and they're encouraged to leave a comment, it's not usually because they're hating on you. It's usually because they're supporting you. On a YouTube video, if you've wasted a person's three minutes of time, you'll, you'll hear it, right? You'll hear it. And it's a little scary. Just my two cents, but I feel like your videos have improved a thousand percent since the last four months, says Zenia and Vlada. Thank you. And I think part of it is because we've openly been talking about YouTube videos every weekend and what we can do to improve them. And I've been incorporating that into my own stuff too. Plus, it's just a mental shift. Like I am going to focus on having better hooks, having pattern interrupts, perhaps higher quality production. If you can't do high quality production, it doesn't mean you can't win on YouTube. 
Uh, in fact, a lot of people have great channels who started who just had their phone and that's it. Going to get my coffee, says Scooby Life. Hmm, I'll work on that. Okay, let's actually dive in. Sorry, enough talking. Let's, let's watch some of these videos. I'm not gonna watch all these videos all the way through. I'm just gonna point out, especially when it comes to the hook. Remember, one of the things that we look for in these videos is the hook. These are some of my more, more recent videos. I'm going to uh, filter them in reverse order by date. And you'll see the very first video I created was October 2009. I created another one three days later, another one two days after that, another one a day after that. I started to get into the rhythm. So I'm just paying attention to the pattern here. November, okay, I was actually quite consistent up front. And then I created some of these videos that were specifically to put on the website. And then, and then I took like four months off here, a couple videos here and there, uh, a couple videos a month, one a month, a couple in October, a couple in November. And, and yeah, so I did start off like many of us do, sort of rolling with a whole bunch of videos, but then I stopped. Let's watch this first video and let's see what that looks like. I think we saw this yesterday, but uh, you'll get a sense of sort of like the confidence and whatnot, which is what I want to point out here. My very first video. Hey everybody, this is Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income blog. So uh, a corp, a very corporate picture. This picture was taken at uh, my architecture studio and it was like the only professional picture I had. And I just had this intro with my face on it, on a white background with a website because I was too afraid to put my actual face on it. And it just seems very disconnected already, right? Plus the slow tone, again, I got started, which was great, uh, but already, you know, I would have just preferred to see myself. Like, hey everybody, Pat here, and today in this video, I'm gonna show you a demonstration of a tool called Camtasia, uh, or a, a tool called uh, a band, or actually, I, I share three different tools here. What does the, what does the description say? Yay, first video here. I'm introducing three tools that I'll be using a lot more in the future, Camtasia for Mac, the Bamboo Tablet by Wacom, and OmniDazzle. So a few things I would have included here, I would have included affiliate links for these products, I would have actually been better off breaking down these videos into one for each individual tool. And at the same time, it would have been really nice to um, just go a little bit more in depth with each of them, right? At smartpassiveincome.com. And I'm trying something out a little new today. This is actually my first video that I'll be putting on YouTube and on my blog. And I'm using some really cool tools that uh, allow me to do some really cool things, which I'm going to be sharing with you really quick today. Now, you get an insider view of what's on my screen, and that's uh, that's done via Camtasia for Mac. And uh, again, that's how I'm recording this screencast right now. Okay, uh, so first thing I would point out is that, you know, I'm talking about I'm doing something new, new YouTube channel, I think that's fine, but... One thing that's really important to do in a video is to share a hook. Why should people watch all the way through? It took me seven or eight years to figure this out on YouTube. If only I had learned this up front, I would have gone that much further. Meaning in this video, if I were to reshoot it, I would, I would, I would pick one of these tools, like let's pick Camtasia for example, which is a tool that allows you to screen record, right? This is what I used to create YouTube videos up front so that I didn't have to put my face on camera I used Camtasia. There's ScreenFlow, there's uh, QuickTime. You can do this as well for free, but, and I don't know why there's so many tabs. I mean, there is legit like a million, what is going on up here? I have no idea. Anyway, I would have better uh, been better off by saying, hey everybody, uh, my name is Pat Flynn. I'm brand new here. I help entrepreneurs. And in this video, I wanna share a tool with you that's been really helpful that you can use to film videos without having to put your face on camera. You can also use it to demonstrate things that are on your computer. It can be a great way to teach people. It can be a great way to do presentations. And that tool is called blank. So make sure you, and, and make sure you hit subscribe because in the future I'll be talking a lot more about different kinds of tools, which in, in fact I did do. But a call to action up front is totally okay, especially if you can nail the kind of reason why you're here and why you're doing this. That makes sense. Uh, let's see, why y'all laughing? You can still get a sense of your consistency. Thanks, appreciate that. Pat Flynn, yes, yeah, smiley face. Okay, well, that was video number one. And again, first video, I wanted to show you that uh, there was a beginning, that's for sure. Uh, let's go into another video here. 
Now this video actually took off, this next one that I'm about to share with you, and it took off because the topic was pretty hot. And you know, I think there, there's something to be said for, okay, well, what's happening in your industry right now and how can you get in front of that? And back in the day when Facebook came out with pages, there was no way to create what's called a Facebook landing page. You had to sort of hack it by creating a tab on your Facebook page. And this was back when Facebook pages were a thing. So I, in fact, did using the same tool, Camtasia Studios, created this video about how to create a landing page specifically for uh, Facebook. This was the first time I started thinking about um, keywords, right? If you look at the title here, how to create a Facebook fan or business page. Oh, this is just literally how to create a page. So let, let's play this video and see what happens. Hey everybody. So five seconds of uh, an intro with music and just text on the screen. Um, that's even, I, I would start, if you're gonna put intro music in your stuff, I would start by having you, again, so, so, so important, seven seconds of you at least talking about what it is that this video is gonna be about, and then any sort of music or intro should go in there. That music was the same music that I have in Smart Passive Income. In fact, I use it here in this video in my podcast intro. It's the same, same music. Hey, how you doing? This is Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income blog at smartpassiveincome.com. I uh, hope you're doing okay today. Today I'm gonna show you really quick how to create a Facebook fan page, or also known as a Facebook business page. Now a lot of people are getting on these right now because it's a great way to develop a long-term relationship and you know in interact with your customers and readers and stuff like that. So cool, I had a little benefit in there. Unfortunately, you can see my email address. Yay, and that email address is not alive anymore, thankfully. But uh, I remember getting emails to this because people found this video. You gotta be careful with what you put on screen, y'all. You gotta be careful with what you put on screen. Um, can you create a Facebook landing page? Uh, not anymore, essentially your page is your landing page and um, they've just completely changed the whole thing. But yeah, you were able to do that before. Um, but just make sure that you don't put your personal information up for people to see, especially if you're gonna do these screen recordings or if you happen to be filming outside, don't share like the front of your home or your, you know, your address or any of that stuff, obviously. Um, let's see. Somebody said that there were questions to answer. If there are questions, please type in the word question followed by the question so that I can more easily find them. Question, Pat. Uh, uh, Pat Flynn looked up to you, Kid Entrepreneur's site and Twitch account. Can you pull it out, show notes, want to refer my 11-year-old grandson who creates games? Looked you up, uh, Kid Entrepreneur's site and Twitch account. Can you put it in the show notes? I want to refer my 11-year-old grandsons. Cool, uh, thank you. Uh, Twitch.tv slash hot coals only. I'll, I'll, I'll probably just start inserting that into different places, but that's where you can find my son and I uh, live on Twitch every once in a while, but I just wanted to, um, yeah, thank you for that, Don. Uh, but Hot Coals Only is our username on Twitch. But anyway, uh, let's keep going here a little bit further. I presented why this was important, why people were doing this, which is great. Let's see how I keep going here. Um, I just created one the other day, have uh, a lot of fans. We've been having fun on there, having a lot of interaction, which is great. So I'm going to show you how to create a Facebook fan page. Even compared to the first video, it's already sounding a lot more confident, right? A little bit more flowy, a little bit more just to the point, which is great. Less, mm, okay, in this video, we're gonna do this. I kinda, I kinda was able to, to, to just, from one, the first video to the next, just improve. Really quickly today. So what you wanna do is uh, go to facebook.com, sign in. Now at the bottom here, What's you're gonna going notice an icon in the little toolbar. That's the ads and pages manager. Again, this is, a, this is a pretty dangerous video because it shares a lot of personal stuff on here and you gotta be careful about things like this. I'm already seeing some personal friends and other, other things like that happening here on the, the Facebook thing. And I'm not gonna go any further. I just, you know, one thing I'll comment on is for tutorials and stuff, did you notice how there was like a pause after I, I was like, okay, let's do this. Fan page really quickly today. So what you wanna do is uh, go to facebook.com, sign in. So right here, there's like one, two, now three, Now at the bottom here, four, you're gonna notice five. an So five seconds, you can easily cut those parts out. And that, even just a little bit of a jump cut to the next section can take things a lot further, much faster. And quicker videos like this, especially for tutorials where people are like waiting for things to happen can sometimes be too much, too much waiting time and people can, people can leave. So let's go back and find another video. 
And there's some in particular that I remember that were just a little bit cringeworthy. Uh, the third video, not cringeworthy. Look at this one. This one blew up. 247,000. It did not blow up right away, though. It took some time. And this was how to build a blog in less than four minutes. So this was my first sort of foray into creating something that was a little bit clickbaity, right? This was the thing that was popular. It still is popular. However, you want to deliver on that. In this video, I created a blog in four minutes because I wanted to show people how quick and simple it was. In fact, this was related to a question that people were asking on the blog, which was how do I, how do I create a website? Well, let me show you in this video and I'll show you how to do it in about four minutes. And I had a timer up and that was really interesting sort of like how to get a timer on the screen at the same time. And uh, what this did was it was my answer to when people were like, how do I get started? Well, here, watch this video. Most of these views came as a result of embedding this on my website. And again, because it answered a specific question and it was on a start here page, it saw a lot of views. And for a while, it actually was ranking really high for how to start a blog. And there was a moment where I was getting, you know, three or 4,000 views a day. That lasted maybe a few days and then it kind of went back down. But again, very, very uh, sort of raw and um, definitely answered a question. And it was, a good title, right? How to build a blog in less than four minutes and write your first post. What, really? Okay, hey, now I gotta see this happen. Is this actually true? And hopefully you deliver on this. I just wanna thank you for taking you the can, moment you of your day to check that. out this quick video of me showing you exactly how you can build a blog and write your first blog post in less than four minutes. So in the time it takes you to boil a pot of water, you can have your own blog with its own domain and your first blog post up all ready to go for the world to see, which is awesome. So I like what I did there. I forgot I had done that. But when something takes time, if you can compare the time to something that people can relate to, then it can be a lot more just intriguing, right? So the amount of time it takes to boil a pot of water, you can have a blog up and running, right? A lot of times with these very, very high level things like starting a blog or starting a podcast or whatever, uh, things can seem very daunting, right? And you likely teach things that are often at high levels or are seemingly very complicated, hence why you're creating tutorials about them. But if you can position the amount of time or effort or perhaps even money investing, uh, money that you might invest in, into something and compare it to something that somebody else is doing. For example, if somebody were to complain, for example, about uh, oh, well, hey, podcast hosting, you know, that costs money. Why don't I use one of these free platforms? Yes, you might lose a little bit of control, but it's free. Well, you can, for the price of two cups of coffee at Starbucks a month, have hosting that you can control and ultimately get your, work, get, get your voice out there into more places. So again, those comparisons and those analogies go a really, really long way, if that makes sense. So I guess, well, I don't know if the, you guys are like now talking about, well, does it, is it four minutes? Um, now it can only take me one minute, in fact, using a water boiler. So there's different ways to wa boil water, right? I don't know, but it worked. I think, I think, I think that just per adds some perspective, if that makes sense. Now you may be wondering why I'm creating this video. And the reason is because I know there's a lot of you out there who just don't know how to get started and, and set up your own blog, which, you know, is the first step to creating your online success uh, for a lot of people. And I so 45 seconds so far, the screen is not changed at all. The change is not screen at all. Plus, I said something interesting when I was like, well, you might be wondering why I'm creating this video. You don't have to say things like that. If you know that that's what people are wondering, just get into the answer, right? So just a little bit of, of, of a few tips there. But man, how long do I go in this? Gee whiz. How did this video get so many views? Exactly what to do. So two minutes and 15 seconds, the screen is not changed at all. Exactly at least have some B-roll or perhaps I could have been scrolling up and down on my website to add some, add some movement to show some proof of what I was gonna talk about. I did not have any of that. You could do it too. Pat, you sound so excited. <laughs> Yeah, it takes a while right, to get so your I voice. I have an right? online stopwatch timer already set up for oh, okay, you, so you know I'm do not it. cheating or you know editing it weird or anything like that. All right, so, here so I have a timer. So four minutes. I'm going to pull up my blog, and I'm going to use the uh, Bluehost link on the right-hand sidebar to start. So, uh, so this was very smart of me. 
in, in, in this demonstration, I showed people where to click to get the thing started. And I said that this was an affiliate link. And so this was a great way to capture some affiliate income. And this, this video actually helped produce, I think, you know, well over five figures worth of affiliate income just from that instruction alone. So uh, keep, keep that in, in mind. Uh, hey, Archer, what's up? Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you, my friend. Always glad to see you here. Bruh. The whole video is eight minutes. I could have boiled water in two pots, yes. No, but I started the four minutes here, and as you see, I have the timer, but um, then I walked people through the process. I did cover up my information as I was going along, right? Blacked out for protection. So anyway, that's another video and a lot of things that, that could have been done to improve. But again, even though it was not so great, even though there was things that were going against the rules that we talked about, there was two minutes of nothing changing on a screen. It still was an intriguing enough video to keep people watching and it was able to get about 250,000 views. Consult a blind guy, question. Any advice to handle nerves? Any advice to handle nerves when interviewed? I'm going to be in the hot seat tonight. Thanks for all the helpful info. Uh, congratulations, uh, by the way, for getting interviewed. I think, you know, the biggest thing to remember is that, you know, these people want you to do well in your interview, right? Um, it's not like an interview like you might see on television where somebody's getting asked the really tough questions because you've done something bad. You're likely getting interviewed because you've had something amazing happen and people want to uh, have these things come to light for their audience. Um, the best thing I would recommend is see how you might be able to uh, kind of predict what kinds of things they want you to talk about. Obviously, you might know what the topics are already and have a couple stories in mind that you could tell, right? This is what, when we see late night shows and stuff, these are the kinds of things that people will sort of prepare stories about certain things. And you'll see the, the late night host sort of like set up, oh, you know, you had mentioned the other day that there was something that happened and then the person, the guest will come on and tell like a quick story about that. And those stories do a really good job of creating a connection and or teaching lessons at the same time versus just sort of making something up on the fly. So you could have a couple stories sort of in your back pocket for answers about questions that person might be already asking you or you might know about this topic up front. And just try to come at it from a casual conversation. Think about it like you're in a coffee shop with this person and you're going to have a lot better time um, you're gonna have a much, much better time just hanging and, uh, and feeling relaxed, right? If that makes sense. Okay, let's, uh, go into some other videos that are maybe a little bit more, um, uh, here. This is one where I put my face on camera and you can see just kind of what I'm experimenting with, right? In this video, I'm explaining the difference between making more money in your nine to five job versus working for yourself online two minutes. And uh, perhaps this might be worth playing all the way through. We'll see. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income blog. Thank you for joining me. Okay, check out the shirt by the way. Obviously getting a little bit more comfortable with putting myself out there. Having an iPhone has completely changed the way I poop, okay. Uh, I have this giant whiteboard behind me. I, I moved into a new home and this was an, a bedroom turned into an office. I had some whiteboards behind me. And uh, as you can see, it says Pat and just kind of, uh, again, experimenting. I think that the camera was like a, a four, five ratio versus 16, nine. So just something to pay attention to. It's kind of more square than it is sort of more cinematic looking. So that's kind of interesting to me. Hair's a little bit messy. Face is quite bright. Background is quite dark, not terrible. I see I have a microphone here on the on the bottom right hand corner, um, but it's just interesting, right? Again, I'm trying things, and we're gonna see what happens. But let's let's play and see what the hook is gonna be again in the beginning. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income Blog. Thank you for joining me today. I just wanted to talk to you really quick about how to earn more money working for someone else versus working online for yourself at home. When you're working for someone else, there's basically two different ways to. So this is when I first discovered jump cuts. Jump cuts are, I don't know if you noticed there, but before the intro to the part that I'm talking now, there was a cut from that recording to this recording. I think this is when I learned 
um, some productivity strategies when it comes to filming videos. So I turn on record and then I just go and I talk some parts I know I'm not gonna use. You cut those parts out, you squish the parts that are good together and you have this really nice engaging video that goes from one thing to the next to the, to the next. I was getting inspired by a guy named Phil DeFranco who has a daily news show on YouTube and that's his style and I was kind of adopting that. So the, the, the lesson here is I was finding other videos that I liked and I was sort of adopting their style, obviously not copying them, but just seeing how things worked and then obviously it was helping for production as well because I didn't have to hit stop and then go and then stop and then go and then stop and then go. The jump quicks are, uh, the, 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 the jump cuts are really great uh, and they're just much easier to do here. I'll notice that again, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue playing this. Online for yourself at home. When you're working for someone else, there's basically two different ways to increase your income. You can work more hours or you can get a raise or you know, increase your wage or your salary. That's it, that's basically it. Now, let's talk about how you can earn more money online. You can build a website, build another website. You can make and sell your own ebook, audio, maybe a membership website, maybe some software that you created, or even like a DVD course. Is it me or do I look like drugged? Or even video, I don't know. I think the lighting made like these bags under my eyes and I just looked like I was like high or something. I don't know. That's so strange. Um, so anyway, April was asking a question. Does it look more or less professional to have your microphone seen in the video? Uh, I think it can look more professional, but is that the look you want? I think that the way I'm doing it in this video is completely wrong where I literally have it just hanging off the side. I think either you you commit to it or you you try to find a way to get the microphone out of the camera uh, view, which is the case here in the office right now. I have a microphone that's sort of right off of screen here, which is called a shotgun microphone, a Rode NTG2, which allows me to capture voice sort of like in this direction uh, toward me and then nothing else in the room. Um, and I want it a little bit more clean and I want you to see all the things behind me and myself, not the microphone in this particular scenario versus there, here, it's like, well, do you want it here or do you, do you not? I don't know. I don't know. I think you were diamond hunting. Yes, probably. I stayed up late playing Minecraft or something. Uh, Pat is the best motivation for us. Get out there and do stuff. Yes, exactly. As you can see, you just experiment, you try, you see what happens. You look so young. <laughs> Thanks, Deb. Yeah, so this is this is just this is just very strange uh, to watch. Okay, let's keep let's keep playing. But you you notice how like I you know I I'm doing this sort of like list post style video, and I'm jump cutting from one thing to another to another, and I'm trying different positions. Again, I remember in my head just experimenting with this, and I liked how it sort of chopped it up. Um, so let me let me let me click play and keep going here. Videos or a premium podcast of some kind. Maybe you sell environment. <laughs> Uh, Scooby is saying, you look sleepy, Pat Flynn. Now I'm looking at the date. When was the date of this video? There's a smarter way to poop with smartphones. Nice video. Wow, that was a random comment. Um, I know exactly what happened when this video came out. We had a kid. We had a kid. That, that was the difference. That's why this. This is the result of having kids. I wouldn't change it for anything, though environmentally friendly turtlenecks. You can become an affiliate for a What? Product. You can hire affiliates to sell your own products. You can increase your website traffic. You can increase your search engine optimization and climb the ranks of search engines. You can increase the conversion rates of different things that you want to have. Okay, so I'm not gonna play the rest of it, but as you'll see, I'm just creating this juxtaposition of, which is a great thing to do. I'm like, hey, you wanna make more money in your job? Great, here are the two things you can do. You can get a raise, or you can increase your salary, right? Um, or you can work overtime. Or here's like a hundred things you could do. And, and, I, and I like that. Probably could have been a little faster. Maybe I would have tried to put things up on, on uh, the screen. I don't think I yet knew how to do that, but words up on the screen as I was saying these things could have helped. Uh, a couple questions coming in. Why do people often position the camera up above them in the beginning? Yeah, we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna have the camera up above looking down at you because then you look a little bit more, you, you look smaller, right? And, and it almost gives a position of somebody looking down at you. You also don't want it down below looking up because then it can look like you're sort of overpowering them. If you're going for a more conversational look, guess what, in a conversation, you wanna look eye to eye, right? You don't wanna be above somebody. You don't wanna be below them. You wanna have the camera 
eye level, the camera lens positioned at your eye level. And that's sort of ideal. Uh, another question coming in here from Rex uh, Torres. Question, is your shotgun microphone hanging overhead the same microphone you use for creating your podcast since you're also using it now for YouTube streams? No, I podcast actually on this microphone still. There is a little bit of a tone change when it comes to podcasts. Um, and so I want to keep consistent with the high LPR 40 microphone here. And it, it does sound different. It still sounds great. And I could probably do it that way too. But I like sitting down and having a conversation uh, versus more show-like. It just brings for a more, um, I don't know, friendly feel to the episodes. Just even without you knowing, since you're not watching the podcast, you're listening to it, I can sit down, I can have a conversation with somebody, uh, and it, it just feels a little bit more inviting than sort of being positioned up like this. I'm sitting on a stool, and the sound, I don't know, it's just, I, I still podcast on my old microphone at a, at a different setup, but... It, that, that is to say that's totally possible to do. I could just be here. Overlord Pat. Yeah, no, not really. Uh, Consult the Blind Guy says, in video, just mentioned being affiliate for your own product. How do you do something like that? So you can have other people promote your own stuff. I think that's what I was talking about. Um, so that means that if you have a product for sale, you can recruit people to promote your own stuff. And it depends on what platform you're on. If you are on Shopify, for example, you can connect and integrate with a tool called Refersion, like Refersion, S-I-O-N, and that allows you to sign people up to then earn a commission if they promote your stuff. If you are on Teachable, for example, Teachable is an online course selling platform. Teachable has its own built-in affiliate program. If you have products and they're not connected to some of these marketplaces like this, there are tools and products that you could uh, get involved with that allow you to connect your products that you're selling individually on your website to an affiliate program that you can have people sign up for. Link Mink is one of them. Another one is called Affiliate Royale, uh, Pro Pro Affiliate or Post affi Affiliate Pro. Post Affiliate Pro is another one. The one thing that I see Pat Flynn had from the start is he looks straight into the camera. Uh, thank you. So yeah, I think. I mean, that's that's something I've always learned how to do is, is to look at the lens. I've noticed that when I put my kids on camera, for example, we just naturally look at the monitor. So if you have one of those cameras where the screen flips out or uh, like me, you have this monitor in, uh, on top, it's the big bright thing and it's the thing that's moving. But that's not the thing you want to look at. You want to look at the lens. Um, very important for phones, right? Because on a phone, it's hard to see that little hole where the camera is. But that's where you want to look at. And that's where you make that connection with people on a video especially when you're doing FaceTime or live streaming. But what do we do? We often look down or to the side at what's moving at yourself. And that's not where you want to look, right? So if I were to look at what I'm seeing right now, this is what I would, this is what it would look like. And I would never be looking at you. But I always do my best to, and I've just trained myself now to look at the little hole in the lens in the camera, um, a little bit easier on a DSLR camera like this, but on a phone, like I said, just as if not even more important. Then he says, I know it's not beneficial for you, but I feel more chill today with 100 people watching Pat Flynn. It feels, it feels a little bit slower. Yeah, I feel you for that. I feel you for that. I mean, I'm going to come up. I'm going to show up here even if there's like five people, right? Because I'm here for you and these things can be watched later. In fact, many people do watch them later, but I feel you for that. I think the weekends are, are more chill anyway. People like to take time off. People are, are sleeping in, which I totally get, but I'm going to show up for you anyway. Uh, let's keep going and watch some other videos. There, there's some other ones that are definitely cringeworthy that I want to find and 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 these older videos i mean look at the thumbnail for this one the over the top office of a six-figure entrepreneur which takes you into my very small office in my apartment building when i got started that was sort of a uh, and you could tell here in these couple of videos how to build a blog in less than four minutes the over the top office of a six-figure entrepreneur trying to get uh, a little bit better with the titles during that time thumbnails not so great i mean look at these thumbnails these don't these aren't very intriguing that's 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 a thumbnail. This this one's pretty good because it's like, oh, what am I circling there? There's some interesting things there. Uh, this one, two small text. I can't really know what's going on here. Let's see. When do I actually add unique thumbnails? So this was the video we were just on. This was an interview with somebody else. Thumbnail. Th th these are just screenshots, I think, from the video itself. This one, wow, look at me. So orange in that one. I'm going to play that one in a moment. But yeah, I could probably even benefit from going back into the past 
and uh, updating some of these thumbnails, in fact. Uh, let's go into, where is the where is the one where I do like a little, um, oh, here we go. Green screen setup. Let's play, I mean, this looks like I'm telling a, a story at a campfire, honestly. And again, two minutes, but I, I, this is just one of my most ridiculous videos. Hey everybody, what's up? This is Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income Blog. Thanks for joining me today on this quick video. I just wanted to show off some new equipment that I got. Actually, it's not new because it's been sitting in a box for two months, but a lot of you know that I purchased a green screen and finally got it up this past weekend. As you can see, the screen behind me is green, but with the one- Again, I look so tired. Wonders of technology, all I have to do is snap my fingers and bam, I'm at the beach and the beach is looking quite nice right now. Uh, weather is beautiful in San Diego, oh but no, in all, in all honesty, you know, really, uh, I'm going to be using this technology to sort of uh, enhance the videos that I'll be doing, um, whether I'm teaching something or if I'm doing a product launch or introducing some new software that I'm coming out with, which I plan on coming out with very soon, I'll be able to just be like, bam, there's my product, uh, and I think it'll be really cool. So, if you're interested in green screen technology and how I have this all set up, head on over to the blog if you're not watching this there already. You can go to smartpassiveincome.com slash green screen and I'm gonna have links probably am Look at my hair, it's like, the lighting is totally off. When it comes to green screen stuff, lighting is everything. As you can tell, I'm just lighting my face from below. I think I only had one light in the room and like, I had a, it is so bad. Um, a little bit embarrassing, but um, hey, you know, I'm experimenting. And as you heard, I'm like, I'm gonna be doing a lot more green screen videos when doing things, talking about products, launching things. I never, ever, ever after this video used my green screen setup again. Never used it, never used it. How many times do we buy things where we're like, we're gonna use this thing and then we use it and then we never use it again. I think that's a very common theme, especially when it comes to like video equipment. Um, I could have benefited by asking somebody who I knew who had a green screen setup, all that was required, perhaps doing a little bit more research about how to make it look great, some of the pitfalls, which I was obviously demonstrating these pitfalls here today uh, on this particular video. And, you know, just how was I actually going to use it? I think I thought it was one of those things that I could buy and then instantly my videos would become better. But then once it got hard, then it was like, well, okay, well, this is not worth the time and effort. Amazon affiliate links, just to let you know, uh, to all the different pieces of equipment I'm using. It's 2011. I'm using two kind of floodlights right now uh, on the side of me. I should probably be using a third one in the front to light up my face a little bit more. I have the green screen and a truss system holding up that green screen. Um, and really, I had a really hard time with this uh, screen back here, uh, ironing it out because it was pretty wrinkly when I got it. That was probably the hardest part about this whole thing, just to get all the shadows out. But anyways. Uh, check out the blog, smartpassiveincome.com slash green screen. It'll forward you to the blog. All right, I just can't. I can't anymore. Let's go back and, <laughs> again, experimentation, trying things. And that still had 10,000 views. And for whatever reason, people gave it some thumbs up. But, hey, I think I think that captured a lot of, uh, look at this video. This, this, this was an experiment. There was a website called, like, Zenmoto, or I can't even remember exactly. But there was a web, there, there was a, a thing that you can add your own script on and then it would create an animation for it. And this was my way of providing an update because Facebook made an update. And um, this was my way of sharing the news about this update in an interesting way. Did you hear that Facebook made changes to how pages work? Yes, I did. It happened back in December. No, I mean the most recent changes, which happened the other day. Are you serious? I just finished designing my landing page. Please don't tell me I have to do it again. Yes, you will. Why does Facebook keep making these changes? This is so hilarious. So anyway, I typed in this script and you could have like different characters and look like 5,000 views. Like, okay. Um, again, this was just another example of experimentation. Experimentation. I don't think it was Animoto. I, I'm, I'm trying to... I don't even think this tool exists anymore. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, this was my first presentation. So I started speaking. This is 2011. I was able to capture... And if you ever speak, 
This is a great way to get some really good video for your stuff. Again, the thumbnail can be improved. I did not even think about the thumbnail here. This was my very first presentation in 2011. I finally mustered up the courage thanks to PT from FinCon. This was at the Financial Blogger Conference in Chicago in 2011. I'll play a little bit for you, but um, I did make some mistakes here as well, not necessarily specifically uh, video-wise because I didn't film this video. But when you go and speak to other places, definitely ask for those video assets and see how you might be able to use them because these are easy ways to get some stuff for your speaker reel and also a YouTube video that you might be able to pop up. And it also demonstrates a lot of authority, you being on a stage and things like this. But this is my very first talk. I wanna play the very beginning for you because you'll t you can, I mean, you saw some of my first YouTube videos just now. I mean, this is me in my very first presentation uh, in person in front of a crowd and I was so nervous. The biggest round of applause. This has been an amazing experience. So I'm, the, the quick story here is I was asked to do a little breakout session, which is usually for like 20, 25 people. The closing keynote wasn't able to make it and PT asked me two weeks before the conference if I could do the closing keynote. So this was in front of the entire audience, 250 people. I was literally so, so, so scared, especially because I was at the end. So the entire conference, I was like, what if I mess up? And of course I wanted to get it over with, but I was waiting till the end. You'll leave, I'll, I'll point out some of the things that I did wrong here. First of all, if you're ever speaking on stage, sorry, not, not sharing my screen here. Um, by the way, if you are ever speaking on stage, never have your name tag. You got introduced, you don't need a name tag, it's just a distraction. Uh, forgot to take that off. <sighs> this, is, this is incredible. So I had an intro and I totally forgot what I was gonna say. So you'll hear me go, okay, this is awesome, this is awesome, it was just, I was lost right up front. This is incredible. Last to speak, right? I have a lot of responsibility. Um, you know, you can go home, I, I could have a really crappy presentation and you could think the conference sucked. And it's all my fault, but you know, last. So I just said that I could ruin the entire conference if my presentation sucked. Um, don't say things like that. Last. I have a really interesting and special relationship with last. In high school, I didn't pass five feet tall and 100 pounds till my junior year. I was a tiny kid. It was super easy to find me on the marching band field. Um, notice I say marching band field, not. Anyway, I'm trying to crack jokes. It's just not sticking. Anyway, it was a tough time. It was a tough time, but I got through it. And um, even though I think I, I thought I did poorly, I had a number of people at the end say it was very valuable, the information I was sharing. I was sharing information about how to stand out in a crowded space. And um, apparently people liked it. And I started to get really addicted to speaking after that. Okay, let's, let's go over here. I mean, what is the, I mean, this video, I don't know why this is on my channel. This was, this was my, my son in our old house. I don't even know why this is on this channel. I, I forgot this was here. Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta bring that to April because that's something that'd be fun to watch. Um, but hey, uh, <laughs> I don't know why that's on my business channel. Um, that's strange. Okay, let's keep going here. Uh, let's see. What's another video that I can point out where I made some mistakes. Okay, th there was a video on the last screen. All right, here we go. This is one where I was so orange. I don't know what the deal was with the camera. I think I played a little bit too much with the saturation in this video, but this was a result of being on the first page of Google with my niche site, securityguardtraininghq.com. Hey everybody, what's up? This is Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income blog. Just doing a quick video for you because I got some awesome news on my niche site that I created for the niche site duel with Tyrone Chum. I started two months ago, just hit the first page of Google. Right now I'm sitting at number six actually, which is totally awesome. Uh, if you aren't familiar with this challenge, you can go to www.smartpassiveincome.com slash niche site duel where I and I think 17 or 18 other people all reveal the niches we're in, 
the strategies that we're using and the amount of money we're gonna make. So uh, I have already started to make some money through ads. So, I mean, this is the first time I think I got so close to the camera. And in fact, I think it's a little bit too close. Um, but I like the blurred background. I think I think this was the first time I, I used a 50 millimeter uh, 2.8 uh, aperture lens. And this was where I could get that really cool bokeh effect. But unfortunately, the color of my office with the lighting and the color, my, like it just looks like it's monotone almost, right? If you look at the, I don't know, I was so orange, yo. That's like, if you look at my skin color in real life, it, it, it definitely doesn't look right. Um, Lighting is hard. Lighting is absolutely hard. The biggest trick and the easiest thing that I've learned is that if you get in front of a window, this can provide the best lighting for you. In fact, there's a video on YouTube here, uh, Pat Flynn lighting tricks. I think that this will show up cheap and easy lighting tutorial for your videos. And, th and in this video, which was several years later, let's see how we do on this video. So this is fast forwarding a little bit, but this is also a video I recommend you check out if you're interested in learning more about lighting and stuff. Um, hey Pat, what kinds of equipment do you use for your videos? Well, all that stuff, which I know isn't really practical for those of you who are at home and shooting videos for your own YouTube videos or even online courses. So I'm using a switch pod to film this. This is still close up, but I, I think because there's movement and because I'm providing context within the actual studio that I'm in, it's a little bit more intriguing, right? The other one you saw is just like, boom, planting my face right in the middle of the screen. And this one, there's some movement in there and there's some interesting things to look at. But in this video, I wanna show you a super simple setup with the help of Caleb here, who's actually gonna be filming with an iPhone, which will be a view that you see, which you should see right now. Hey everybody. Uh, how to film something of quality that is YouTube and or video course worthy. So stick around. All right, so Caleb, before we set this up, I wanted to ask you a couple things. Um, is an iPhone or an Android, Samsung or whatever, are, th are those cameras good enough now to film? Plenty. Plenty good enough. Okay. The second question on lighting. Do we need to buy lights or get lighting in order to have good quality video? The only thing buying lights does is it makes it consistent so you can film at any time of the day. But if you don't have the money for a light or you don't want to spend money on a light, you can use natural light and use the biggest window in your house. Okay, so if we were going to film a course here but we didn't have all this equipment, where would you recommend we go? And hopefully people might have an equivalent or something similar at their house. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm demonstrating real life scenarios about when this stuff would work, right? Did you hear how I just said, okay, if we're filming a YouTube video or a course, where should we go if we don't have this equipment? And this is a great way to show relevance when you are coming up with your videos and your topics, right? So how might a person actually use this information? Share that up front and then you tell them the information, right? Tell them what you're gonna tell them, then you tell them, then you tell them what you told them. I do want to play more of this video for you because um, not only is it, you know, very vlog style, but it still teaches and I like that style, but it also demonstrates some really nice effects. And I want to show you sort of the differences of what might happen. And just again, since we're talking about YouTube videos here, this provides some good lessons for you for how we can easily get better lighting, which obviously you saw was a huge problem for me when I first started. And yes, Caleb is definitely a tall man, that's for sure. Because this is the iPhone view now. Right, so, so this is where I would be looking. Right now, you're really dark, and the outside is bright. And if I try to make you really bright, then the outside is completely blown out and white. So sitting in front of a window when it's really bright that's doesn't work. That's bad. That's like a silhouette, right? Yeah. Okay, so instead, I would imagine that having the light facing you would be best, right? So let me go here, and let's see what difference that makes. So I'm setting down the tripod, a little low. But, tap on your face, exposure's good. That's decent lighting. I don't think I would change much. So without spending a dime on lights, you see how being in just front of this large window is so different. I mean, look at this view versus that view, right? Versus this view. Hi, everybody. Um, but how about, let, let, let's think of like what's behind me. If you are in a room, uh, what would be best behind you for scenery, right? Because if I were to go to like this scene, you'd have a half cut window and some post-it notes, which I really wouldn't want in a course or a video, right? I mean, oftentimes I default to filming with a bookshelf behind you. So turning, having the bookshelf behind you, that's a pretty normal Okay, backdrop. so this is actually not a bad angle. Yeah. Would it matter like filming into the corner of a room versus like the flat side? Um, sometimes corners add depth, but flat side, clean wall, you know. Anyway. 
Pat Flynn, lighting tricks. You can look that up if you want to lo uh, learn a little bit more. And I think the biggest lesson is that that window. Um, if you're just even doing a, a little TikTok video or a little Instagram story or something like a quick Instagram photo, use the window filter, as I like to call it. So you're facing a window. You have the camera looking back at you. That can provide the best lighting. Uh, just make sure that you are conscious about what's behind you, like we were talking about there. So hopefully... Uh, that makes sense, and um, that would have solved a lot of problems with some of my older videos. Let's go back and just, man, this, man, this, I don't know what was going on there with the saturation. Uh, let's find, so we're about, I mean, even, I mean, this is two years into my YouTube channel, and it's still not looking great, but as you can tell, it just, it can take time um, to get to that point where things can finally start to feel a little bit more rhythmic. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna have how many rows can I have up, up here? Fifty. That's it. Okay. Well, let's do fifty, and then I'm gonna go and find some other videos that we can look at. So here we go. I finally start to create some thumbnails. Right. This is, I think my first thumbnail. Do you actually need passion to profit? Now the text here matches the text of the title, which isn't usually advise because that is um that that that's kind of a waste you have the same i think i would have changed the thumbnail to just say passion or is passion needed something different right because you're sort of just doubling up but let's let's play this video we're a little bit more into the future now i think we're two and a half or three years sorry i'm trying to zoom out here and it's going really slowly there we go. Hey everybody, what's up? It's Pat Flynn from smartpassiveincome.com and today I'm gonna to tackle the question, do you actually need passion to profit online? And my I, I don't, what's going on with my hair there? That's interesting. But I like how I position myself to the side like this. And when you position yourself to the side like this, it allows for really cool things to happen over here, which is really nice. I remember actually creating this video because it took me forever to put that text on the screen when I was talking. Essentially, I just had individual words like do and you and actually on different timelines and I timed it to pop up when I said that thing. But I think it was worth it because did you see just how that added a, a different level of flavor there to this video? And today I'm gonna tackle the question, do you actually need passion to profit online? And my quick answer is well, yes and no and I'll uh, explain why in a sec. When trying to figure out what to do online. What so now I'm starting to get fancy, right? I'm doing a screen recording here of something in Photoshop where I'm writing on the screen and I have my little bamboo tablet doing that. I had a nice little splash intro there, which was pretty cool. I gave a hook at the beginning. Things are starting to look a little bit better here, which is really great. I feel like this live stream has cut years off my learning curve. Still so much to learn, but the content I'm producing looks so much better than what I was doing three months ago. Thanks, Pat Flynn. Thank you, Heart T, T Ranch. I uh, appreciate that. That's awesome. Uh, let's watch maybe one or two more videos here just to see what's going on. Um, here, okay. This was my very first really big hit on YouTube, and this came three years after and this was a series as you can see this series here i've updated the thumbnails this was when i started creating my podcasting tutorials and this as you can see had about four hundred thousand views the next video in the series had two hundred thousand. the next video in the series a little bit less this was my first sort of series but it was the first time i really put a lot a lot of time and effort into something and the one thing i've learned here on youtube is that when people see that you've put a lot of time and effort into something especially if it's helpful people notice people notice and so does Google, and so does YouTube. So watch the start of this video to see how the production level, now three years later, has finally stepped up. Yes, this took forever to edit, but pay attention to the different camera angles and how I used voiceovers and B-roll during this video. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income. And this is the first of a series of videos that I'm shooting to help you get your podcast up and running because a podcast has been one of the most 
most beneficial things I've ever done for my brand and also for me personally. So I'm hoping this video series is going to help you get yours up running much faster than I did. In this first video, I'm going to be going over some equipment options like microphones and things like that and also some software you can use to help record your voice because you're going to need the stuff before you even record your first words. So uh, let's get right to it. Sound quality is extremely important when it comes to your podcast. Bad sound quality can mean the difference between people listening to your show or just totally skipping right over it. And sound quality starts with your microphone, and I've gone through my fair share of mics. Here's a quick comparison of each. So here's a Logitech USB headset, one that you would use for Skype calls and gaming and things. So you might be wondering, how did I get that really cool effect where the mics were sort of moving along or this rotation around these? I had a tripod that I put on wheels that allowed me to then just scoot them, almost like a skateboard, right, if that makes sense. And uh, that added a, a, a such a cool first impression with these videos. And again, I consciously said, I want this video series to be the best video series about YouTube. And yes, it was indeed Beats Headphones, which is not really a typical podcasting headphone setup. But for people who are just starting out in podcasting, like nobody knows really the, the difference. Um, I did notice that my desk was like very shaky in that video because it was just, I had this large monitor and any sort of movement, I had my elbows on the on the table. So there's still room for improvement. But as you can see, light years ahead, and now I'm doing this B-roll. And initially I'm talking about microphones. I'm saying, this is really important, here's why. Nothing you say matters until you have your audio quality great. So let's go over the equipment. And now what I'm doing is I'm, again, consciously going, okay, how can I make this great? I'm sharing the difference of these different microphones and how they sound. Yes, this took me forever to edit, but it was definitely something that paid off. Things like that. And it runs about 30 bucks on Amazon. If you have like hardly any budget, this is what I would start with. But as you can hear, it sounds very hollow. It's, it's not going to give you the quality that you want in a serious podcast. Okay, so now you're looking at the Blue Snowflake, a nice little compact USB mic, runs about 46 bucks on Amazon, and really fits in your pocket. And it sounds really decent for the price, and this is a great starter mic, but again, it picks up a lot of echo, a lot of room noise, and I think about upgrading to a more professional mic if you're serious. Okay, so now you're looking at the Samson Caesar 1U USB Studio Condenser Microphones, one of the more popular USB mics that's out there. And it runs about 70 to 75 bucks on Amazon right now. As you could tell, it sounds a little bit deeper, a little bit nicer, a little bit more pleasing to the ear. And it was one of my first professional microphones. Okay, so now you're listening to the Audio-Technica ATR2100 USB microphone. And I, I really have to credit Father Roderick from fatherroderick.com for this beautiful find. Because we both use Hyo PR40s, which I'll show you in a second. And this casting, you know you're going to be doing a show for a quite little. a long time. And you want to start with the best sound quality. This is the mic for you, the Hyo PR40. Okay, so in addition to the actual microphone, there's some microphone accessories you're going to want to pick up. For example, a pop filter. Those are those foam things you put on top of the mic or a screen that you put in front of it like you see in recording studios. You're also going to need some sort of stand to hold the mic and position it where you need it to be. And also, so you'd see that focus change. Anyway, I just wanted to share with you that eventually I got to the point where I'm like, okay, this thing that I'm going to create, this tutorial, has a lot of opportunities to share things in fun and different and creative ways. Let's actually, and I, I literally did nothing else this week except produce this, this series of videos, which in the second videos does a lot of screencasts of how to edit and a lot of things like that. This, as you can see in the chat, even some people here were like, this is the video series that got my podcast started. And this is the video series that everybody was sharing. This is, this is what essentially put me on the map on YouTube. And it took three years to get to that point. But if I could go back in time, I would probably just consciously go, okay, how can I demonstrate for my audience that I am going a little bit and above and beyond for them, right? Versus just these little quick little videos here and there. Um, and I heard this tip from Mr. Beast as well. Mr. Beast is uh, a young YouTuber here who has, I think, over 30 million subscribers now. And he says that your audience knows when you've put a lot more time and effort into something. And um, this is how he's been able to grow. And so that's just the last lesson I want to pass on to you before we finish up here today. Hopefully it's been fun to come into this uh, live stream today and just see some of the older videos and see how we've progressed over time. And I still have a lot to learn. But as, as I always say, you gotta be a disaster before you become the master. And I don't think that we ever become the master, but mastering the process and the style and your rhythm and your voice here on YouTube or on a podcast or on a blog is really key. But you can't do this until you get started. So if you haven't gotten started yet, definitely get started. And 
try to level up each time in one way, shape or form. As you saw, I was trying experimenting with different things each time. A lot of times those things were failures, but a lot of times, and especially in the case of this podcast series, it's, uh, it, it's really great too. So um, I hope this helps and I would encourage you just to continue to create moving forward and continue to iterate and get better and better each time and pull inspiration from other YouTubers and other people who are doing things in interesting ways, see how you, you can incorporate them and get out of that comfort zone a little bit. That can definitely help you uh, get that sort of wave of results that you've been looking for and that you definitely deserve. It takes time, it takes patience, it takes grit and perseverance, but I promise you the rewards will come. Just keep going. So, hey, Team Flynn, thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, this was super fun, and I look forward to serving you tomorrow where we're going to kickstart our week again with some high-level tips and strategies to help you in your entrepreneurial career. If you haven't yet done so, make sure to remember this link, patflynn.com slash the income stream. That's where you go every morning. Tomorrow, we're starting at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, and we're going to dive into some more stuff for you there. Um, we're going to make it fun. So thanks again, everybody. Have an amazing Sunday. Good evening. Good night. Good morning wherever you're at in the world. Just appreciate you so much. Team Flynn, you're amazing. And as always, Team Flynn for the win. Peace out, y'all. Appreciate you. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. Yeah, biggest lesson, just keep going. Just keep going. Um, I definitely stopped and paused probably when I shouldn't have. I definitely have let my own self get in the way and I could have filmed more videos if I just was a little bit more um, confident. So uh, keep up the good work and take care, everybody. Happy Sunday. Bye.